This question deals. This question deals with a broad context of policy. Given the present fiscal crisis in the state of California, how is the 57th Assembly District directly affected by this crisis, and what measures would you take to address its impact on the district? Rudy or me? Well, that's Mr. We'll start with Mr. Bermudez. <laughs> Mr. Parker's choice. Okay, yeah. we'll start with Mr. Bermudez. Thank you. You know, education is at the forefront uh, of this budget crisis. Every day, uh, it's harder and harder to send our children to college, as well as we're seeing teachers being pink slipped. Decisions that are being made at the local level uh, are very difficult. And I would say they're more difficult because they deal with the residents on a daily basis. When you look at the needs of our community, I believe we need to prioritize as legislators in Sacramento. We need to focus in on things that are going to stimulate the economy and embrace those items so that we can spur on the economy and, and reduce the impact of these budget deficits. Uh, I'll get into more of that when, later on in this meeting. So. Mr. Hines? I want to try to answer specifically the question. Could you repeat it again? Given the present fiscal crisis in the state of California, how is the 57th Assembly District directly affected by this crisis, and what measures would you take to address its impact on the district? 27,000 citizens that belong to this district, your neighbors, your friends, are out of a job. 27,000. If I ask for you folks out here in the audience to raise your hands, Every one of you could point to a friend that's been looking for a job for 12 months, six months, or even three months. And I would gather a third of you would be able to raise your hand, know a friend, family member, that's losing their home to foreclosure. The way I would stop it is I would keep Sacramento out of our district. Stop having them pass legislation, stop having passed ordinance and regulations that basically stop the natural power that this district has within its people to create jobs. That's how I would stop Sacramento and create jobs here. All right. Okay. Our next question from Dr. Santos. Uh, this question has to do with uh, higher education. A state legislator must address complex issues surrounding the funding of equally deserving yet competing priorities within the district. Given these competing priorities, how would you address the concerns over access, affordability, and equity in higher education if you are elected to office. And we'll start with Mr. Hymas, first response. You can get all the education you want. The state of California can give a free education to everybody right now. Pay all their bills, pay all their student loans, and there's no jobs for them. There is no jobs. I have master degree students working at McDonald's. It's ridiculous. Education is the jewel of California in the sense that we are the first state in the nation to set the standard for the country and the world. But how can I tell a child right now, get a job, when Sacramento politicians are stealing city council money from La Mirada, Whittier, not permitting the natural strength of this community to build jobs? I can't hire anybody because i got to go pay workman's comp right now. I have to contract out now. Education is important, but it has to wait until we get jobs. Mr. Bermudez? There's no doubt that we have problems uh, funding education in California. It's harder to get into our university system, and those who get in can't afford to pay. A lot of the decisions that impact education were created by the legislature that is currently in office. For instance, this legislature, this body that's currently there, approved a tax credit for companies to keep jobs out of California. That tax credit voted in on a majority vote has cost the state $1.5 billion. We need to close the loophole 
you know, it's more expensive for companies to do business and hire people and work in California than it is for these corporations out of state to employ in those other states and not pay taxes in California for the benefit they receive from Californians. We need to close that loophole and send that revenue savings, $1.5 billion, back to higher ed. Okay, Ms. 